Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I haven't done a 10 minute painting, watercolor painting for quite some time. So I'm excited to have a real time tutorial for you today. My 10 minute watercolor series is all about finishing a painting in a relatively short amount of time, trying to keep it simple and just uh, give you something to practice with and you can feel that accomplishment getting it done in a short amount of time. So you can kind of see the painting here. It is a flamingo. That is what I'm going to be painting today, walking you through the steps and sharing some tips uh, for my process and things like that. Before I get into it, I did want to mention my website, CoreyFrankCreates.com. It's a great way to get connected with me. You can sign up for my email newsletter, check out my art shop, all those lovely kinds of things. So I'd love you to go visit CoreyFrankCreates.com. Alrighty, without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and dive right into this tutorial. So I have a six inch by nine inch, 140 pound sheet of watercolor paper here. And you can see I have no drawing on the surface. For these 10 minute paintings, I just go ahead and apply the paint. The idea is to get something done as quickly as possible and not be too concerned about exact proportions and all of that. But normally for longer paintings, I would do an under sketch. But I started out with cadmium red deep as the paint color and as I was painting I realized it was almost a little too pink of a color. Flamingos really are almost a sort of orangey pink so I switched here to the cadmium red light which has a lot more of a kind of orangey red hue and I was blocking in basically the shape of the head you can kind of see that there where I'm working on right now just to get a light wash of color down and then kind of extend it into the sloping neck and then I went back with much thicker paint to darken up that head and continue on to the neck to kind of get it to the proper opacity. With watercolor, of course, when you add water, the paint becomes semi-transparent, so the white of the paper shows through, and then the less water you have in your brush and the more pigment, then the darker the color, and you just layer it on your paper to make things more opaque. So that's what's happening here. And I'm using a size 8 round brush, which comes to a fine point, so I can paint details as well as kind of press it on its side and cover larger areas as well. So it's a fairly versatile brush and really again just kind of blocking in the shape here and trying not to get too concerned about all the details because in only 10 minutes you're not going to be able to make it look like a 100% realistic masterpiece. This is really just about creating a recognizable image or representational object, figure, whatever it may be, and go from there. So using quite a bit of loose washes here, especially for that kind of back uh, portion and body of the bird because Flaming the flamingo has kind of these under feathers that are a lighter pink and then the darker ones coming up over the top. So I added quite a bit of water to dilute the paint and just let it soak into the paper so it becomes a very light color and then where those darker feathers meet the lighter portion that's kind of where I'm extending the darker color and having them meet and when the wet paint meets other wet paint it just kind of flows right into each other we call that the wet into wet technique or wet on wet technique and so that just creates a really nice uh kind of uh, blending right there. Did go ahead and extend that uh, leg down that the flamingo is standing on and you can see the folded leg as well in the reference image and by the way the reference image is linked in the description if you would like to see the image I was working from or using as inspiration. It's from unsplash.com. They have copyright images on there but I always like to give the photographer credit. So we have our folded leg in there and again not being too concerned about painting every single detail and having it be 100% accurate just as long as we have the basic shape 
and figure, that is the most important piece. So now I am starting to add in those kind of longer back feathers and there was a portion on the kind of back end tail of the bird that there's a strip, like a couple strips of black feathers. So that's what I was starting to add there and I realized I had added a little too much water to my black paint so it wasn't as dark as I want it to be. So I moved back to the beak and paint it in again with my cadmium red light. That is basically what I'm using. I use cadmium red light and black, and then in a little bit here, I will also use some raw sienna. So here we are just blocking in that shape of the beak, and if you go and look at the original reference image, oops, I had a little blob there. The side of my hand had accidentally smeared that black I had already laid down because it was still wet, so you want to try and be careful if you are working over wet paint that you don't smear your hand in it. So I am painting in that beak and in the actual image the uh, the angle of the bird's head and beak and neck is such that the beak actually winds up overlapping slightly with its neck and again since I didn't have a background sketch I didn't quite get that but you can clearly see what this figure is meant to be. So that's the most important part. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect in matching the reference image, but as long as it gets you there and, and has some sort of figurative representation, I'd say you're on the right track. Added a little bit of a time right on the tip of the brush there, a little bit of detail for the eye, so just a little kind of like black semicircle, and then a little dot for the eye. This is where I use that raw sienna, which is kind of a gold golden color and there was just a little bit of that kind of on the white feathers of the face they weren't pure white and again I accidentally smeared my paint so <laughs> I thought I'd maybe leave it because it could be a little bit of an aesthetic but I do think I kind of lift it off a little later and I honestly when I do a 10 minute painting, I set a timer and I usually have half my screen or like a portion of my screen with the timer so I can keep an eye on my time and the other portion with the reference image up. But this time I just went ahead and had the reference image up and didn't have the timer so I really wasn't sure how much time I actually had left. So I wanted to make sure I got enough of each part of the bird from the beak and the face to the neck to the body and the feathers that it felt finished enough and again not really knowing how much time I had left I was moving fairly quickly so I added some oh that's right I did use some sepia brown on the neck there for that shadow that's kind of a cast shadow from the neck being curved on that underside there and I did add some sap green here at the bottom the water the bird was standing in it, it's not a pure blue generally kind of close up views of water kind of have a greenish brown color but I did go and add some ultramarine blue in there just to make it a little more of an attractive color and I could have been a little better about painting it so that there were pure white highlights in there that would have made it look a little more like a reflective water surface but instead I just kind of went in and kind of just did a little itty bitty portion of that with the reflection of the leg. Didn't want to spend too much time on that because I was more concerned on getting a little more detail on the bird. So there is some uh, sepia that I'm going in with to kind of darken things up, add a little bit of texture where the kind of almost scaly texture of the bird's leg is. And then again, back with some very thick cadmium red light paint has that lovely orange tone. I'm just going in and adding those feathers on the body and the ones that kind of come off uh, its back. So that is kind of what I'm doing there and just filling in little details. You can see I'm not uh, taking too much time with it. I'm kind of just quickly laying in some strokes and just trying to be free and loose and not get too exact with things. Here's where I decided. So I have cleaned out my brush, got some just plain water on it, rubbed it over those spots on the side there that I didn't, that I had accidentally smeared some paint and then took my 
spare towel and just blotted it up. And that, for the most part, erased just those little bits of um, accidental smeared paint. So again, adding a little bit of kind of brown to that front uh, sort of body portion. And here I decided, okay, I want to make sure I get a little bit of kind of fun, whimsical stuff because I feel like flamingos are already sort of a fun, whimsical type of animal, or at least we associate that with them. So I added just some drops of cadmium red light paint, which in involves a lot of pigment in the brush, but then you dip it back in your water to get it really wet, and then you just tap the brush over the surface of your paper and you get water droplets. Did add a signature here again. I really wasn't sure how much time I had left, so I thought, okay, at least I'll be able to say I got it done, and if the timer ran out right then, I'd be good to go. So I did add my signature, which is normally the finishing touch, but since I still had more time and my alarm hadn't got off, gone off yet, I went ahead and just added a little bit more shading. I think that I meant to go into sepia, but I wound up using some raw umber to just add a little bit of shadowing to that lighter portion of the feathers on the bird's body. And again, just kind of blend and smooth things out where some of those shadows are. Add a little bit of texture, especially to the neck where I just went in with some fairly thick cadmium red light paint and just kind of do this dabbing motion where I'm not creating smooth strokes, but they kind of uh, just create this patchiness that hints at the texture of feathers. Extended a little bit of that area of the face, trying to get the shape as accurate as I could close to the image without actually having done a very accurate under sketch beforehand. There was some shadowing on the face, so again, I go in with some uh, sepia brown, which is a very rich dark brown there, just to add that shadowing. The eye does get a little lost, but that's okay. I knew that by this point there wouldn't be too much time left, and in fact I think it was right around here or a little before that, that the timer had gone off and I decided, okay, I'm gonna add just a few more little droplets of paint and call it good. So it's probably about a 10 minute 30 second painting, but here you see the finished piece and it's recognizable flamingo in a short amount of time. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that and found it helpful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. Until my next video, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. God bless, and I'll see you soon.